maybe what I'll, I'll just mention here at this point is, uh, is I, I prepared a brief introduction, just maybe about a five minute uh, spiel here um, on, uh, on the, uh, the applicant, um, you know, uh, and, and the, the process around getting to where we are today. Um, uh, we, I have uh, the, uh, I have those, uh, the plan sets that I've, I've I noted earlier, um, which is a landscape uh, plan set, uh, an architectural plan set, and the streetscape images. Um, I, I'm, I'm hoping that's all that we will need to cover today. If, if is it, would there be anything else that we need to look at today? You think, Sean? I think that's probably a good. Just show us what you've got, and we'll okay. get the meeting started. We have a couple of business things to do before that, and then um, once once we're recording, I'll just I will let you know when it's your turn. Um, Christine, and I've got the okay. go ahead. We're ready, Marie. Okay. okay. Thanks, Marie. Okay. okay. So, um, welcome this evening to the design advisory panel meeting for June 23rd. And we'll just uh, get, call our meeting to order here. And uh, first of all, just before we get going, I just want to say a, a big thank you to Kate for taking over the chairmanship for last month when I was away. I really appreciate that. Did a great job. And I was really, really happy that somebody could step in there. So, that was wonderful. So thank you, Kate. And uh, I guess our first order of the a meeting is to adopt the agenda. And was there any changes to the agenda? Any late items anybody wanted to add? No? OK. With that in mind, can I have a motion to accept the agenda as presented? Uh, Tony, yep. seconder, uh, Kate, all in favor? Great. Unanimous, all in favor. OK. And then we have some minutes to. Um, uh, approve here. So you should have all received the addendum to the minutes uh, for the design advisory panel meeting on uh, May 20, 12th, uh, 2022. And uh, yeah, there was just some minor changes that were made that were adjusted in that addendum. Okay. So basically the same, same information still nothing too major. So uh, can I have a motion to accept those, um, those minutes um, with the addendum? Um, Tony, <laughs> seconded uh, Ken, all in favor? Okay, approved, great. Okay, so we can move on. We have one presentation this evening for a property at 505 Kennedy Street and uh, Christine Mays, our city planner, she will uh, um, introduce it. Go ahead, Christine. Great, thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> so uh, you guys are taking a look at development permit application DP001271. It's for a four unit ground oriented multifamily residential building that comprises of two one bedroom dwelling units and two two bedroom dwelling units. Um, the subject property, which encompasses two par parcels on, with separate titles, is located at the southeast edge of the old city, fronting on an unnamed laneway parallel to Kennedy Street. And that's between Albert Street and Hecate Street. It is zoned R15, so that's Old City Medium Density Residential, and is designated neighborhood in the uh, official community plan. The subject property falls within Development Permit Area 8, which is Old City Neighborhood and Development Permit Area 9, and that's respective of multifamily development, as well as the Old City Plan. Um, so the Old City Multifamily Residential Design Guidelines and the General Desi Development Permit Area Design Guidelines are applicable to the proposed development. There are two proposed variances associated with this proposal, and these are as follows. So one is for required parking spaces, and so the applicant is seeking to reduce the minimum required parking from six parking spaces to four spaces, which is a variance of two spaces, as well as for small car parking, and that's to increase that maximum allowable percentage for small vehicles from 40% to 50%. So that's allowing two of those four proposed parking spaces to be there for small vehicles. And uh, I will now pass that over to the applicant for his uh, side of the presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Christine. Okay, so uh, you can go ahead and share your screen at any point you want at this at this point, and, and then okay, we'll great. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, my name is Sean Galbraith. My company is Pacific Development Services. I'm here today on behalf of the applicant, Ms. Kimberly Garland. Uh, Ms. Garland has owned her residence uh, at 505 Kennedy Street for about 15, 16 years now. Uh, she's watched the Kennedy Street neighborhood change as well as the needs of the average in Imoy throughout these, this period. She has recognized the need for housing in this community for many years and has been considering her development options since about 2010. 
Uh, Kim had uh, quite a lot of involvement in the design. Uh, there was no architect used in this plan. There was a, a, a drafting and design firm used, and Kim uh, was uh, instrumental in providing some guidance with respect to um, some of the architectural features and uh, the sort of space design inside of the building. Uh, her focus was on uh, good utilization of the lot, uh, concern for the neighbor's privacy, and proposing and constructing a building that she would be proud and happy to live next door to um, and or live in. Uh, she uh, also reviewed and provided guidance with respect to interior details and floor plans resulting in, what I believe is a well-considered congruent architectural style that seeks to reflect the craftsman style of buildings originally constructed throughout the South End of Nanaimo uh, back in the 20s. Uh, Kim has been sensitive to the potential concern of, of a local residents. Um, prior, to the, uh, prior to making the application, she requested that the architectural design and renderings, including streetscape images, be circulated and comments uh, requested uh, and received from her neighbors. I personally spoke to most of these affected uh, and, uh, and received uh, support from all eight that were canvassed. Uh, and I should mention that that, uh, that we could have gone farther afoot, but we really just stuck to uh, to uh, individuals that would be uh, in, could directly view the uh, subject property. With respect to suite composition, uh, Kim felt it was important uh, uh, to uh, provide a mix of larger size units, um, and felt it was uh, better suited to longer term longer terms of tenancy, as it incorporated ample storage, oversized parking garages. Um, and oversized parking garages for e-bicycles and scooters uh, for those who do not wish to use a car for all of their transportation requirements. To conclude, uh, I believe three words uh, would sum the project up quite well and it's what I heard the most uh, when discussing this project with neighbors um, and they were thoughtful, attractive and harmonious. So at that point, at this point, I'll, I'll pass this over to you guys and, um, and I'm here to answer any questions that you might have and I'll bring up whatever, uh, whatever plan that is required to cover off the topic that we're discussing. Okay, um, does the panel, would the panel like to see the drawings again or? Yes, okay, so maybe you can just share your screen and, and show us um, the, the plan, the floor plans and elevations, please. Okay, so we have, uh, let's see here. Um, Need to open a file. <laughs> if you click over to the left, um, you might be able to on the you have the one little the pictures there. Click on yeah. them, they should come yeah, up. I, yeah, the problem is, is this is the rendering package. I'm trying to get to another file here. Oh, okay. Um let's just uh, let's see if I can get that this way. Here we go, architectural. Okay, here we go. I'll get better, I promise. <laughs> it's a good, it's a big learning curve. <laughs> It is at my age. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at A1, which is the uh, ground floor plan. Um, do, do you want to walk through this, or how would you like to, 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 uh, to review the plan? Well, I know when I was looking at it, it would really help to explain how it's sited on this property. Um, you do indicate where the laneway is, <clears throat> but I'm not quite sure myself how I wasn't very clear on its orientation to the neighboring house how the how the where the driveway is how cars access the garage and that sort of thing so you might want to explain some of that sure okay so um we'll start with the first question um McClear, you can see McCleary Lane in that in that drawing there on the right hand side um we uh have proposed an SRW for future uh, lane widening um, at such time that is required. Uh, and then beyond the limit of the SRW, um, there is a, a 1.5 meter setback uh, to the building face. Um, housing the, the, on the, let's say, uh, okay, so at the top of the drawing here, um, the uh, house that is located uh, adjacent and to the south um, is, uh, is located about 30 feet away from the corner of the structure. Um, just in rough numbers, 25 to 30 feet. 
and um, and there uh, that is the closest structure other than the building that um, that is uh, on the lot at 505 that is beside this lot. Um, that building is about 16 feet uh, corner to corner away from the proposed structure. Uh, access for the site is to be provided off of McCleary Lane. Uh, the uh, initially, there were a number of different thoughts around how this might work, um, and uh, what we opted for was a single access to McCleary Lane as opposed to uh, a bunch of vehicles backing out onto McCleary Lane. It just seemed like a, a better solution here to uh, access to the site. The driveway itself is uh, is approximately 22 uh, feet wide, uh, and that is um, that is within standard for uh, single access, so uh, turning into only one side of the drive lane um, under the, uh, the bylaw. Uh, 21, I think it's 20, sorry, 21.96 feet are required. I think we're like 22 foot six or something like that. Those parking spots in the garage count as four of your parking spots. And then where are they, where are the rest of the parking spots? Um, we, we suggest that parking would be, uh, there would be offsite parking um, on Kennedy street for visitors. Um, we propose that uh, that the residents of these buildings, uh, these units, I should say, this building would likely park in these parking spaces, and um, and their guests or visitors would park up on Kennedy Street, and would access the site by way of an easement that runs between Kennedy and the uh, corner of the subject property. Okay, so what you're saying is there'll be there'll be a pathway from the street. That's from correct. Kennedy coming down into the. Yeah, back. let me see if I can find that on the next plan here. I think it's. Uh, Let's see what we got. Sorry, slow to load here. I think it's in the pane that's, that's blank. Um, let's see if I can find. This is a quite a large file and I, I guess the computer is very slow to load it. Sorry about that guys. Okay, so on this plan here, um, I can see it now. So on this, uh, oh. well, I'm just gonna have to wait for this thing to load this image. Thanks for your patience, guys. Okay, let's see. Um, is it the one up below right here? Okay, so if you look um, at the top left-hand side of the drawing, you see a corridor that is fenced and it runs between the subject property and has a gate. There'll be an access, um, there'll be an electronic access and latch at that point for visitors to contact uh, individuals that live in these units um, and, and be able to access the site from that point. And that assumes that those individuals that are visitors are coming and gonna park on Kennedy Street. Right, okay. And uh, do you have a landscape plan that you'd like to go over? Sure, uh, that is um, right here. Did, did you want to look at any of these other drawing, other, any other images here while we're on this plan? Yeah, maybe I should um, let the panel, <laughs> are there some things you, the panel would like to see? I would like to see them all. I would. <laughs> okay. Okay. So um, let's just, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I know this is going to be slow, Tony, but I'll do my best to get it to, not to make any mistakes here. Um, okay. So we saw the, we saw the, the, the garage plan and the, the, the basically the, uh, the basement plan. Um, now we're looking at the first floor plan, and um, what you and this is on this floor. There are two one uh, single bedroom units. Um, they are entered um, at the covered entry so entry uh, uh, area on the uh, of the unit, uh, and they they are on, on opposite sides of the building and can be accessed either by a staircase from the driveway area, um, and or from inside the suite. Um, the parking garage, I should say, can be. Uh, can access the, these suites directly from inside the parking garage. Uh, and then guests 
would uh, come in off of Kennedy Street down the corridor and um, and then would uh, would enter uh, directly into these suites from the covered air entry areas. And the purpose of the covered entry area was uh, was to try to create a bit more uh, outdoor amenity space. Um, these areas are approximately, if I'm not wrong, they're about 10 by 12 um, with a bench and a pergola. Each of these units um, uh, has uh, access and private use of these areas. Let me know when you move, want to move on, Tony. I think just maybe scroll through them and explain them to us. Okay. Good, Sean, thanks. Sure. Um, these are the elevations showing um, the building elevation, uh, natural grade, um, finished grade, uh, et cetera, on, uh, on, the, on the north side and uh, uh, north and east side of the building. So we're looking at we're looking at is if we were we're looking south at the building um, as if we were uh, maybe uh, in the laneway uh, in the sorry the access driveway to the four parking stalls looking at the building you can see the, the garages there and then the other image that we're looking at here would be as if we were standing on Kennedy Street um, looking across the the, uh, the adjacent property at 505 um, to the subject property and the, and the relative elevations are there um, this building is within um, within height elevation requirements. Um, and uh, other than there was a there was a, a bit of a hiccup on the FAR, which there'll be some adjustments made for, um, but that will re possibly reduce the uh, the top floor living space um, by as much as 200 square feet total uh, for the entire building, uh, and that has to do with uh, um, only two of the garages qualifying for underground status, as opposed to the four that we were proposing. Okay, so let's see, we've got Southeast Elevation. Okay, so we've got Garage. First floor, okay, second floor. Now, uh, the second floor and uh, upper attic story um, uh, are, uh, are large two bedroom units. Um, access to this, this space is, uh, is from the back of the building. Um, and or through a central uh, a corridor that that allows the individuals to and I'm going to have to go back to the uh, to the garage plan so you can you can understand this. Um, what we've got going here in the garage here let's okay so let's look at. Okay, let's look at this plan here. Okay, so uh, on a five here what we see is we see. Um, uh, uh, the garages uh, for the uh, single uh, bedroom units, the one bedroom units, are the two inboard uh, uh, parking stalls. And their staircases travel uh, from the garage um, uh, through a, like through a vestibule um, from the garage level up and directly into the suite. Um, for individuals uh, living on the uh, second and second two and a half floors up, um, they're in the upper level units that are uh, two bedroom units. They are in the outboard uh, parking stalls. Um, they uh, they access a central a central stairwell um, in in the way that you can see. And um, I'll just take my cursor and, um, and trace the path. And you can see that you would be coming up here, and that is a landing. I'm going to take you to the next floor. Is everybody with me on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the next floor um, is this landing here. You see the, the, the cursor there. That is the landing that uh, provides access uh, to uh, both right and left into uh, either of the two upper floor units. Um, there is also access directly outside. You can see those doors there that provide uh, direct access for uh, for fire fire purposes um, from the suite itself directly outside, and uh, for a provision for guests who are parked up on Kennedy Street um, to, uh, to, uh, to uh, meet and greet and um, visit the individuals that are living in the upper floor units. So, um, so we looked at the, uh, this is the uh, second floor of the building. Um, and, uh, and we can see um, here, and I, where the cursor is here, is the staircase that's coming from the lower landing up into the suite itself. Um, if I if I point the cursor to the lat to the staircase that brings you from the garage level to the landing, it's it's that staircase right there that's in the center. So this is down 14 here. You can see 
uh, and that's taking you from this level down to the back door and or to the foyer that allows you to enter uh, travel down the stairs to the garage level. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, I'm trying to make this as, uh, as clear as I can. It's probably very confusing. So um, uh, this, is, uh, this is a living space only. There are no sleeping areas on this floor. It's a large, spacious plan. Uh, the idea is to create a, a sort of a, a more distinctive um, and a more attractive design um, in, in, in the hopes that we would uh, attract tenants that we would want to stay longer um, and a different um, not people that were looking for something other than a 500 square foot one bedroom unit. So uh, on these on these levels on this level and uh, for these units they have a, about an eight I think it's a uh, they show it as a six by eight deck oh sorry eight by it's supposed to be an eight by eight deck so that is the outdoor amenity space for these uh, these units um, and as well there is the uh, the uh, the area where um, access uh, is provided from the street um, uh, on that <laughs> we'll say first floor level. Um, that allows, uh, and there is an area there uh, where uh, individuals can sit. There's a pergola there as well, where people can sit and um, and enjoy the outdoor space. So that it would be would be the uh, total of the amenity space for these two units. This space here on the deck and space at the entrance. Uh, this is the upper floor unit. The bedroom level for the upper upper units. That's these are uh, attic. Uh, attic space. This is attic space above the uh, above the uh, sill plate of the truss. Um, there is two bedrooms here. There are two bedrooms here, I should say, um, and they're of reasonably spacious size. There is a uh, there is a four piece ensuite and then a and then a three piece uh, on this level as well, and in suite washer and dryer. Along with this, you have a, a fairly spacious master bedroom, it's about fifteen by fifteen, with a with a spacious walk-in closet that allows you to access the ensuite directly from the bedroom. Okay, so um, that kind of covers off. Did you interested in any of the sections, guys? Section drawings, or did you want to have a look at these? Tony, did you want to? You want to keep seeing these? No, I've got a good understanding of it, but then I'm an architect, so <laughs> it's uh, it's it's pretty clear to me how it all how it all works. So if good. anybody else uh, needs looks to, looks like, good, uh, it, the presentation is fine for me. Okay, great, great. So perhaps Sorry. maybe just talk a bit about the landscape plan. Right. Yeah. Okay. So let's get there, um, and I will bring that up right now. <clears throat> So sorry for the small image size here. Um, the um, okay. Oh, sorry, guys. To you is fumble fingers here. Um, okay. Okay, so what we have here is we've done our best to provide um, uh, green screens uh, around this site. Um, if you look at the, we'll get to the, um, we get to the renderings, and you can see the effort that's gone to providing trellising and and uh, and uh, climbing plants. Um, I was I was told by Christine, thank you very much, Christine, that our climbing plants are not climbing plants at all, and that we have to uh, we have to spec a different plant there um, in those planters uh, adjacent the pergolas and the lattice works. Um, I, I think when it came to landscaping, what we were trying to do here was um, to put as much um, as much plant material on the site as we as was practical. Um, and, and our focus was on providing green screening um, for our neighbors. Um, it was a primary focus for uh, the applicant um, and, 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 it, and, and um, uh, Lombard North did this design and, um, and we asked them to, to take into account these, these, these requests. Um, we have a planter at the back. There is also uh, just really for annuals for owners to plant in if they wish. Um, and I, I know that you had suggested, Christine, some um, some balconies, uh, some uh, uh, flower boxes or uh, planters on balconies. 
Um, I personally am not a fan of these things. I see them as a problem down the road and from a maintenance perspective, but, um, but it is something that we could always add to the design if you felt that um, more greening was needed. Um, on the bottom of that drawing, you'll see that um, we have, um, uh, we have uh, four uh, medium-sized trees. Um, those trees, uh, they have been specced and the, uh, and the planter size has been specced so that they are, there's adequate amount of soil volume for these trees. Um, uh, we have spoken to our neighbor that uh, those trees uh, serve to protect the view of. Um, and, um, and this party is very happy with uh, the efforts that we've gone to to try to, uh, um, to consider their, their situation in our design. That's all I got. Okay. Um, is there anybody in the panel want to ask Sean any specific questions and have him show another part of the plan here before we uh, move on to comment? No? Okay. Uh, maybe you can stop sharing your screen then, Sean. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And are there any questions for the city? Um, yes, Kate. Kate, go ahead. Oh, sure. Um, Christine, um, I believe, but I'm not 100% sure, and maybe we just do this sometimes, but for an SR, a proposed SRW, is there potential to plant as long as it's not... Um, plant material that the homeowner would be like trees or something that would um, they would feel a loss at when it does come into play, but is, is there not opportunity to plant there right now? We can definitely ask engineering. Um, certainly we've sent those referrals out. Um, so that might be a good question for them to go, to go back. If that's a recommendation that comes from the design advisory panel. Yeah. Cause I, I think it, <laughs> it's okay if there's an understanding of the loss down the road, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know, but I know I planted in this. <laughs> well, well, I understand that that is now um, uh, an acceptable practice in the Nanaimo. So um, it wasn't something that we considered because it's off site and our landscape architect didn't want to propose something that wasn't within the subject property. Um, and, uh, and in fact, we did ask, um, we did ask uh, Graham about uh, plantings, um, in the SRW that serves uh, the, the, the house at 503, I think it is, on the corner. There is an SRW that travels along this property. It's kind of, it was a sort of a pinch point in the design, frankly, um, that made it difficult to work with the site. So what we did is we chose this design in part because it existed, but in the process of trying to understand what we could do in this SRW, I did query a gram on this. And, and what we ended up having to do is actually move the SRW in order to put these trees there. So um, that is what we propose to do here to uh, allow this to happen. Um, so my guess is they're not going to be big fans of anything that's going to last a long time um, in that SRW, but um, I can't see why you couldn't put like multi-stem shrubs or something like that that is easy to remove and, um, and, and in the end ends up being, uh, I guess, a boulevard tree of sorts. So I don't know where, like who's responsible for maintenance there, but I would assume that uh, like, um, like the grass out on the boulevard, um, you've got to take care of it. Okay, well, Sean, um, did you want to ask a direct question then again to staff? Kate, are you? Um, oh, actually, that brought up a question for Sean. Are there, so there are two SRWs? Uh, there, well, well, there is an existing and a proposed. Yeah. So okay. if, we, if you look at the plan um, and uh, do you look at the A1 drawing, if you have that available to you, I can bring it up again, too, if you like. You're good? I okay. have it, yeah. Okay, good. So yeah, let's not go through that, that ordeal again. Eh? Uh, thank you, by the way. Um, so on that plan, um, you will see uh, an SRW in, dotted, in a dotted line that runs along the driveway itself and uh, not McCleary, right? So that is the servicing SRW that our neighbor requires for moving their services off of the sewer off of her property. Uh, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so you okay, can that's what I thought. Yeah. And I was thinking about the other proposed SRW as the potential uh, space for planting. Exactly. Yeah. And, okay. And, and, yeah, we, we would like to do the same, um, but we know that it, it, if it turns into an SRW, it won't be our, our decision to make. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for um, uh, Thanks, city staff? Kevin? Yeah. Thanks, Madam Chair. And welcome, Christine. It's uh, nice to have new people on board. And um, in the staff comments, there was, a, there was 
some mention of the, the floor area ratio and exceeding the floor area ratio. And uh, I just want your comments on that because normally uh, floor area ratio, if you exceed it, you normally have to go to rezoning. So just your comment on that, please. Yeah, so certainly our the preliminary uh, review with our planning technician down uh, downstairs noted that there could be some potential that the underground parking may not meet the underground parking um, sort of uh, regulations within the residential zones. And so there is going to need to be a little bit of work done with Sean just to make sure that we we meet those. So um, it is 0.85, unfortunately, on the project data did note 0.91. And so I think um, just to sort of smooth over some of those um, items, and then hopefully once, once we have that chat, um, we're able to address that item. And how can that affect this application coming back to us? I, if I could, oh, go ahead, Kirsten. Oh, no, no, go ahead, John. I was going to say, uh, Kevin, I, I think where we would see a reduction in floor space, uh, if, if in fact it is required, um, would be in the half story uh, in the attic level. We reduce the bedroom sizes uh, to provide for um, about a 250 square foot or about 5% smaller uh, uh, FAR. Um, I think that's, I'm hoping that's the worst case scenario, uh, but we have yet to determine what that would uh, would be. Uh, so I, I think with respect to your question, I don't know that there'll be much change in, in, in uh, regards to the appearance of the building, if any at all. Okay, yeah, just one of those things I think that in, in the future you might want to address before you come to, to design advisor panel that you get this address prior to it, because even though it might not affect the exterior forming, forming character, it could affect other things. And uh, even though uh, I hope that you can get a result, uh, but I, I would think that uh, it, it's one of those things that it, it could be very serious. You know, like if you have to go back to, like this isn't a, a variance thing, this is rezoning you know you have to get things rezoned for things am, like this so so so, yeah. so uh, in the future i would say I, I would strongly recommend that you you address this beforehand and uh i, I support this project so I'm, I'm not reprimanding you in any way but but uh, i would just say that uh, in the future uh, try to get these things resolved beforehand Okay, so strictly, strictly speaking, Kevin, what I can say is, is uh, a great, a gr great deal of effort has gone into understanding uh, whether this is an approvable design ahead of uh, the submission of the application. Uh, I've had multiple meetings with Brian, uh, Caleb, and I have had conversations, um, and I think uh, it was, it was, it was understand our understanding that if we read the bylaws stri strictly, and and the, the rules are that that the, those garage areas have to be uh, they they must not be uh, higher than 0.8 of a meter above finished grade so we, we 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 estimate finished grade to be the slab level around the building um, in which case all those units all of those parking garages would qualify uh, and that was that was our understanding I, I mean this wasn't this didn't come just from me we also had uh, J.E. Anderson involved uh, their surveyor um, uh, and and some of the folks uh, you know that I know professionally um, that helped me with some of this design and understanding the bylaw a little better and um, and it seemed to me quite clear to everyone that was reading this bylaw that we we would be in a good place with this application. So this is sort of coming out of it, and, and, and no offense, Christine, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus here in any way, but I'm just saying that this to me kind of came out of left field a little bit um, here uh, on Monday uh, or earlier this week when I spoke to Christine about it. So yeah. we, we do have the ability, and I certainly do understand and appreciate that people's time are, is important, and, and, I, and I, I hate wasted time. So um, yeah. uh, in the future, I would definitely do my best to make sure we didn't have this wrinkle uh, at this stage of the game. Yeah, and I, I agree. Like, every city is different with their bylaws and how they uh, interpret and enforce them. So, so uh, I just wish you luck on that. So hopefully uh, you can get that resolved. Th thanks, Kevin. Thanks for the clarification. So uh, next what we do, Sean, is we uh, do a round of the panel members and they get a chance to either ask you questions or make some comments on the, on the um, design and form and character. So um, we'll get started with that. Um, maybe uh, Kevin, since you've, you've got going there, maybe you'd like to kick her off. <laughs> sure, I'd, I'd love to. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, and Sean, thanks for your presentation. Um, uh, I think uh, what you have here is a is a very good project. Um, uh, I 
I support the park parking variants. Uh, it's one of those things that uh, we seem to be supporting a lot, even though uh, I'm not sure if we're supposed to be making recommendations uh, in support of that. Um, I like the siding of the buildings. Um, I think uh, the building, the way it's sited is done very well. Um, the only things that I would mention are um, the waste, like the city staff commented on it is about the waste bins and you only have two waste bins inside the building. So if Sean, you can comment on that uh, as to why there's not three waste bins. Uh, we made a mistake. Um, <laughs> simply put, we didn't put the green waste bin in there. Um, there certainly okay. is adequate space in the garage to 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 for another bin, um, so we can easily show that in the next uh, in the next revision. Yeah, there yeah there seemed to be enough room even within most of the areas that you've accommodated for them that uh, it seemed like the bin size is seem to be by scale a little bit bigger than what they really are, but I might be wrong, but, uh, so, so I just would recommend that you try to make sure you get the three waste bins in there. Um, one, uh, thing I would just comment on, it's, it's not a recommendation, but the, the stair winders that you have there at the bottom of the stairs at the, by the garage, the, where the, the winders are, I would definitely double check, uh, the dimensions, how they come off the corner, because they don't seem like they're um, I, Kevin, enough, I, enough distance apart. So just double check that. I might be wrong, but it, the, the scale doesn't seem to work for me. Um, so just make sure that works because I don't want you to get into it. I, I just want to just address that quickly, Kevin. So so I'm a builder as well. Um, and I, I believe me, I built a lot of winder staircases and I know exactly what they got to look like. Um, yeah. We did, we did, uh, we did scrutinize this closely um, and we, we're, it was and assured and it was confirmed that there was enough space in these uh, in these turns to to uh, to put these winder staircases in and have the minimum tread width be, um, I think it's five and a half inches at the smallest. Smallest, um, yeah. Vertices, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, uh, so it just I, doesn't, I yeah, it's, yeah, I know it's five and a half inches, but when I looked at it, it, it looked less than that. So, so uh, maybe just double check that, but it's not, not a recommendation. I just wanted to warn you on that. Okay. Um, uh, everything else, uh, landscape concept, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the landscape concept. Um, the the red Armstrong trees spiral. They're they're really nice and everything, but um, there's no con conifers on, on your palette. And uh, if you can throw in one or two, like a Serbian spruce or something, uh, uh, just to get something a little bit more in there. I, I like the density of the, the palette, uh, even though um, is not a lot of variety, but uh, I would say that if you can provide maybe a conifer or two in, into your palette, um, I, I, I like what you did with a hardscape. So, so I would say that um, all things considered, I, I, I like the landscape concept too. So, so um, all in all, Sean, I think you did a great job and uh, everything to me looks really good. So thank you. Well, thanks, Kevin. I'll pass that along to Kim because she was uh, she was quite uh, involved in the project as well. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. Um, Tony, would you like to make your comments? Sure. <clears throat> thank you. It's always good to see a, a, a thoughtful, um, higher intensity infill development um, that really maximizes the site. And, and this one certainly does. Um, I don't have any difficulty with the variances either. Um, I wanted to ask a question about the, well, before I get into that, my, my only, my, I, I think the building, the design is, is good. It fits in uh, well and has that kind of, you know, comfortable residential character that, you know, you, we all know and love. It's, uh, it's uh, uh, quite suitable. Um, my only concern is, is the lack of outdoor private space. Uh, for the units uh, on the upper units, you have a 
what you know, seems to me for, for such a spacious unit, a fairly fairly mean little corner balcony there. Uh, I know you said it was eight feet by eight feet, but uh, it didn't quite look that big on the, my drawing either. But uh, maybe maybe that's just my misunderstanding. I just wonder if that could be a little larger in proportion to the the generous sized unit that it's uh, that it's there for. Uh, and on the lower units, um, there was basically no outdoor space. There wasn't even a balcony. Uh, there was an indent at the at the entrance, but that's where you know visitors are coming and going, and mailmen or somebody. I don't know what. It's certainly not private, but it, it's available if that could be uh, developed. I suppose for the unit. <clears throat> Um, well, or, or uh, well, let me just today. finish here, and then um, you know whether they those those units could be um, uh, you know given say perhaps a, a similar corner balcony to the upper units, for example, which would be easy to construct because they'd be aligned. Um, or failing that, just a simple balcony cantilevering out over the over the driveway. I mean, you know, you know, we can go six feet with with wood frame without much difficulty, and. Uh, you, know, you should be able to park your average car underneath that. So I just uh, want, I, I just feel that, that there could be a little more attention to private outdoor space. And then just leading off from that, um, the, 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 is the area of the statutory right-of-way along the driveway part of the driveway requirement, the driveway width requirement, or is it two separate, two separate things? Mm -hmm. It's two separate things. Um, okay, the, be, be, yeah. Because um, the, the way it's shown, and again, if I'm reading the drawings correctly, that, that's one large paved area. And I just wondered if the statutory right-of-way portion of it uh, couldn't be softened a little bit and maybe even developed with, you know, I don't, you know, portable, obviously, benches, planters, something that, you know, the, the residents collectively, uh, if they become a, a social... Uh, uh, you know, units uh, could go out there and have an occasional, you know, Thanksgiving barbecue or, you know, some, some kind of a, a group amenity space or even an individual one, but to kind of offset or add to, um, you know, the, the fairly small private amenity outdoor spaces they have. So I guess that was my only, my only comment. Uh, if I could just speak to that, uh, that comment about the first floor, uh, the first floor outdoor amenity space and private area, those areas that are the entrances to these units, they are private, they are gated. Um, other residents that live in the building don't have access to those areas. Uh, the only reason they would have access to them would be for the purpose of a fire escape. Um, so, that, so there'll be some sort of a, a push bar system on there or some sort of a fire escape system that allows uh, egress from the site, either through those areas. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that that's actually required at this point, point Tony. I think that there's actually adequate egress just through the, uh, through the, um, the existing um, uh, uh, sorry, easement that runs over 505 out to, right out to Kennedy Street. So I think if you actually had to escape the building, get away from it, um, and you were in one of the upper units or even the lower units, you would have that ability to go out that um, back side of the building and then head straight out to Kennedy Street. So just with respect to the outdoor uh, amenity, and this is something that we, we did, we did com a complete redesign of those lower units in order to accomplish this. Um, so we, we, we looked at decks. Uh, this, this concept is actually Kim's idea. Um, and she did the space plan. Um, and and I, I, I personally liked it um, because it provides for about a 10 by 12 outdoor living space um, that is really your own to use. And um, I thought I could see patio furniture sort of in, in it around the entrance there. And then, of course, there's a pergola. And then there's all of the, the, the uh, walkway that, um, I mean, it's, it is walkway, granted, but it is also a part of the space for those two lower units. The upper units, uh, I agree. You know, we, we've, we kicked this around and around and around. And, um, and I guess what we thought was um, uh, um, an eight by eight balcony is, is not a great huge balcony. Um, and and, I, I, and I, we discussed enlarging the balcony, but I thought what we would do is come to you folks first and get some feedback from you guys. Um, and once we had that, I thought we, we might implement a change um, that would in, in, provide for a greater outdoor amenity space for that floor. Well, thanks, Sean. And, uh, Tony. You're welcome. And the SRW space? Well, just, just quickly on that SRW, um, I, I think one of the problems that we have in this neighborhood is we have a lot of homeless folks that, uh, that traverse the laneway behind um, this, this property. 
I, um, I would like to do something with that space. Um, we didn't propose anything for the reasons that I cited earlier, um, being that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't going to be a, a property that we were uh, entirely up to, under control of. Um, and at some point, something might happen there. So uh, certainly no hard landscaping was going to go in there. We thought about some shrubbery, but after talking to Graham, it didn't seem like there, that was much chance of him allowing that. But we can always you know, try that again. Um, grass, we can always put grass down there. That's, that's definitely something that can happen. Um, but there is a little bit of concern around you know uh, creating a space for um for folks to uh, camp um in an area that is already pretty bad um the cat stream area is uh, yeah. is a constant battle here for local residents um and uh you know we see this development as as maybe a step forward um and and, and i think the rel the, the the residents in this area and around us see the same thing which is the ability for others to sort of over bit more oversight over this area, um, more interest in um, in uh, the care um, and control of this area. Right now, it's everybody's backyard. Nobody really you know has much to say about it other than the folks that are directly affected. Um, but um, but that was the concern around doing much with that site. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Thanks. Okay, uh, Ken, would you like to make some comments? Can you turn your sound on. <laughs> Oh, I, I agree uh, with Kevin and Tony uh, about the design. I uh, I was impressed, and then, and I'm more impressed now that uh, Jason explained that it was Tim that came up with a lot of the ideas. Uh, I drove around that area, and it, it really does capture some of the details of the existing houses, and, and, the, and the, I like the color scheme, totally integrated with the neighborhood, and. Um, I think um, Kevin had some comments about the selection of trees, about putting some conifers in there, but around the property, there are some big conifers surrounding that property, and I don't think you need any more big conifers. In fact, I like to see more contrast in, in deciduous trees and some of that have really bright, there's some deciduous trees that have really bright uh, green uh, palette on it that really contrast and during the summer they're really nice and in the winter they let in more light to the uh, to the units. Um, I think maybe what um, Tony's comment about the deck on, on the upper unit it might help if if uh, you looked at how the furniture is arranged and it might help you adjust <laughs> the size of the deck by looking at how you would arrange furniture. And whether you can make it smaller or, you know, whether, well, those are, which way those you would are add. But, optics issues, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. but it's just optics. It makes it easier for us to understand if we look at, we have to guess at how the dining room is going to be and how a lot of living room furniture is going to be laid out. But those really give us a better understanding of how the space might be used. And I think uh, we can provide more better better feedback. Uh, other than that, uh, since I'm not a landscape architect, I'll let Kate handle that aspect of it. So that's all, and I approve of all the variances that uh, you're asking for. So I had no problems with them at all. Great, thanks, thanks Ken. And uh, maybe we'll give this pass this over to Kate then to more comment on that. <laughs> thank when. you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you for your presentation, Sean. Um, I, I think my main concern is just the lack of green um, uh, vegetation and greening on this site. And so um, I do see the SRWs as some, some in the meantime kind of spaces that you could capitalize and use, um, whether you're just adding perennial grasses and flowers, I think that you would greatly benefit the neighborhood by looking at those as opportunities instead of constraints. And maybe you need to think about fencing in your driveway if, if the concern or the constraint to doing something with that land is your concern around um, uh, others using the space um, who aren't meant to. Um, so I, I wondered about that, that you could look at, because it's not uncommon. And I think, is currently it not fenced, the back? No. It, it is fenced presently. Yeah, yeah. So you could, that's one way of overcoming any of your security concerns and 
and allowing you to benefit from that available space. Um, and I agree, I, I think too that the, but it's already noted by Christine, um, just um, a little more diversity in the planting palette, especially to take advantage of having those pergolas. So having plants to grow on them would be great. And even just a little more diversity in the plant palette might benefit your project. But generally, I, I mean, I love sword ferns, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I just think there is some missed opportunity here with your available space that's available to you right now that, that I don't think would be a great cost, but could be a, a great improvement to the neighborhood. Well, we, we haven't made cost um, a prerogative here when, when uh, driving design. Um, so that's not really on the table at all. Um, we, we really wanted to produce the best that we were able to. Um, and, and of course, budget is important, but, uh, but at the end of the day, um, uh, as I pointed out, um, Ms. Garland will stay here and may even reside in one of these units. So she really wants it to be quite good. Um, you know, uh, the boulevard, we, 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 the, the, the SRW that runs along the uh, McCleary Street there or McCleary Lane, I, um, I, I, all we can do is ask Graham whether, what, what he would support. Um, it, it, and uh, we, we are not able to fence that area, of course, um, but um, that was part of the idea of having, you know, that step planter there um, along the laneway was to ha not have to have a fence um, and still provide a, a physical barrier. And, um, and we're trying to stay away from a gated situation here. Um, I, I really, I don't think that that kind of thing is the answer personally. Uh, I mean, um, if, if, the, if the residents come to us at some point in the future and say we have, we're having difficulty, we would have no trouble putting a gate in, but um, it's not something that I would I, I want to do if I could possibly help it. Um, I, I think the problem that we're dealing in the, with in the community is something that will at some point um, uh, diminish, um, hopefully. Um, and um, with these sorts of projects, these info projects, well, hopefully this investment will help um, uh, generate the interest in doing so, you know, in improving these areas, particularly the Cleary Lane um, itself. Um, we, we do have a, a, an interest in approaching public works um, uh, around a, um, a boulevard improvement scheme um, that was floated here a month or so ago in the paper. I saw that, but we didn't, uh, I wasn't able to respond to it. Great. Well, thanks. And Kate, did you have anything else? Um, yeah, I'm not, I just wanted to clarify, I'm not really suggesting a gate, I'm just saying you you use the issue as a rationale to not do something with that SRW, like, so I think you should take advantage of that land. Okay. The residents. <laughs> Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll do that with, uh, with, uh, with Graham's blessing, I guess, but, uh, but it is something that we've been interested in trying to do something with. Um, when I say I don't, we were reluctant to do much there. It was really about the uh, hard assets like uh, hard landscaping and or benching or something like that, that was suggested earlier. Those are the sorts of things that we would be reluctant to try to, to see there, um, given what, uh, what might possibly occur if, if there were benches there, for example. Um, I do like the idea though of using that space and being able to use that space um, as just a, as was mentioned, uh, you know, it's a bit of a spot to have a barbecue or even just, you know, um, uh, just, a, just a softening of that side of the building. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in support of for sure. Okay. Thanks, Kate. Um, Angela. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you to Sean for the presentation and to all the panel members uh, tonight. Um, I just have a few things. Uh, I'm going to start with the, sort of my main sort of um, question, concern, or um, I'm just trying to understand. I, I kind of have a bit of a struggle with the orientation of the whole building itself. And I feel like... Um, because the building is oriented towards the um, the east, the sort of face of the building where the where the parking stalls are, correct? Uh, I would say that orientation that is uh, west, more west, northwest is what it is actually. Oh, sorry, that's what I mean. Yeah, northwest. Yeah, yeah. northwest. Um, so you're coming down McCleary and you're driving up this driveway and into this this parking area. Whereas if the pole building was facing McCleary Street, you have all these beautiful big windows and this road right away access into these driveways. Um, 
it seems to me that having the building orientated towards McCleary, you, you're having a view out towards the mountains, towards Cat Stream. Um, turning the whole building this way, you're eliminating all of that uh, opportunity for this beautiful viewscapes. Um, additionally, if you turn the building, you don't have to build this big retaining wall area. You get a nice drive, flat driveway in. And then um, just in line with the uh, multifamily guidelines or um, quadplex, uh, duplex ones, um, it does suggest that if um, that you put your parking into the garages and then if you need extra parking, it, it would go um, on either side of the building. So it looks like you could use that SRW area as opportunity to create an extra parking stall on that side um, if the orientation was such. Right. Well, um, we, and I don't know, like, if you've considered this and it was just like off the table because it just doesn't work for some reason, but I'm trying to understand why um, you wouldn't want to take advantage of the view for all of these units. Well, okay, so so uh, so with respect to orientation, a great deal of thought has gone into this, and um, and I will just say that there is a similar type of structure on Sophia Lane that doesn't have uh, underground parking. It is just parked in front of the, the building. Um, the, the the notion of backing out onto into this this uh, onto this laneway, all all of these stalls backing out onto the laneway, I, I didn't think it was an efficient design. Um, I, I don't. I, I thought it. it uh, it sort of opens all of those folks up to you know potential hassles with um, with people uh, homeless the homeless folks in the community, and I thought a more private entrance would be a better entrance. We, we'd have a single entrance onto that laneway as opposed to four entrances. Now there is another element to this, and that is when we looked at design, um, we we wanted to make sure that we would incorporate an access future access to a possible underground parking garage on the front building on the front uh, lot that one that is, that is fronting onto Kennedy Street. So the, the, the idea is that at some point in the future that that, light, that lot would be developed and, and there will be an easement over this driveway to allow access to that underground parking from the lane at such time that it is ever built, if ever. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that the orientation, um, it takes into account the fact there's an SRW there that we can't do anything with. Um, we, 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 I guess what I, what I can say, Angela, quite simply is, is there are a lot of pinch points here on this project. And, um, and, you know, with respect to the view and all, these are things that we really wanted to try to improve on. And, and we, we looked at um, uh, just what we could do in terms of glazing and what direction they faced in. And in fact, these windows that are on the, um, on the driveway side of the building, they actually kind of face out over towards uh, um, uh, Mount Benson. So you actually have quite a nice view from those windows anyway. Um, they are uh, up high enough that uh, they will likely see over top of the building, the, the trees that are proposed to be built are grown alongside the driveway, or planted alongside the driveway. Those trees are have a limited height of about 25 feet. So, um, uh, yeah, I would, we would love to have been able to take uh, you know better advantage of the view, uh, but in the end, um, practicality went up. Yeah. Okay, I, you know, other concerns I have with, with the orientation is just the orientation towards the neighboring lot with all these um, windows, just, you know, we don't know what's really going to happen at 825 McCleary, but um, having the face of the, of the building with all those windows facing that future development, um, I, I don't know, I just feel like, um, I don't know if it will work. Um, it will. So that whatever is going to happen on that lot one day. Yeah. So 825 is, a, is not a very developable site. Um, uh, we, we actually looked at um, a joint scheme of development with uh, four neighbors. I talked to Tristan. He's the owner. I spoke to Joan and Rob. They're, they're on the other side of us. Um, we, we don't get along well with the lady on the corner. Uh, unfortunately, we, we tried to involve her and, um, and it, it seemed like we, we, we couldn't really get any traction on that development um, uh, 
proposal. Um, there were there were at least two parties that were kind of interested, but we thought let's just do this on our own, keep it simple. Um, and what I will say is is that the distance between the building and the property line is about 25 feet. So we are we're, we're good for glazing requirement on that side. So even if somebody built at you know say you know one and a half meters from the their south boundary or I guess it's southeast boundary, um, we would still meet the meet criteria for setback. Um, and in fact, it's a reasonable amount of setback uh, for uh, this amount of glazing uh, when facing uh, a building on an adjacent site. And I guess maybe Tony would be, I think Tony um, looks like he's in the business there looking at all the drawings behind him. Uh, maybe he would be able to comment on this. I don't know. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, okay, I'll just leave it on the table at that is, um, you know, maybe um, I would like to just put forward uh, the op option of just cons maybe the idea of putting it back on the table and considering uh, a the orientation towards um, the South uh, for privacy sake, for future developments, uh, and also to for ease of access into the site, as well as um, the possibility of taking advantage of the the two flanking parts of the building um, that you could put two additional parking spaces at potentially. Um, right. I'm just throwing that on the table, um, and then and then you'd have you'd eliminate the the need for a retaining wall uh, along the Cleary Street, and then you'd be using that extra space, um, not just having SRW just sitting there, um, and there could be some other items that come out of that, but uh, just quickly putting that on the table. Um, and moving on from that, I just, uh, as far as landscaping goes yeah, in keeping with the guidelines, um, it just talks about having natural hedges as much as possible to replace um, sort of hardscape fencing. So just looking at having um, the retaining walls, concrete retaining walls, um, you know, maybe it might be something to look at uh, putting a hedge above that to maybe naturalize it a little bit more and adding some green space into the or green elements into the landscaping uh, as well as it does talk about putting some um, evergreen um, uh, shrubs so maybe maybe adding some, some more shrubbery might help with the greenery um, I know staff talked about uh, incorporating some lighting into the landscaping and um, illuminating the sign. And I was thinking that uh, the site doesn't have any, <laughs> or the development doesn't have any um, sort of green elements that I can see of. And maybe this, um, maybe the lighting could be solar lighting. Uh, it's just a small option to in integrate something. Uh, green elements into the design. Uh, and, and in that uh, line, maybe there could be some other opportunities to implement some other green um, building technologies. So many, op so many options, Angela. Yeah. We, we, we are totally on the same page as you here. Uh, 100%. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so just, know, we, if we were to build this, what we would like to do is we'd like to put in a solar array uh, that would provide power for all the charging stations. In these in right. these in these places, and we would use uh, we would meter the, the juice that was used, and um, and then um, and then the residents would be charged accordingly based on on, on the cost of power, not on what BC Hydro's cost of power is. So um, so these are uh, happy to to get into that conversation with you. Uh, it is something that is uh, front and center for us in this project as well. Okay, yeah. So I'll just throw it out generally, just uh, something to consider um, as you're moving forward. So, and then, oh, the other item about the orientation of the building, just, um, I know the issue of homelessness and uh, people living in the area, um, but having the building face the street does provide more eyes on the street. And that's kind of like an old um, standard planning <laughs> mantra is eyes on the street. And just having that building orientated towards the street just offers that much more security with everyone being able to see what's actually going on. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, taking a blind eye to it and twisting away from it. Um, so I'll just add that to that comment. Um, one more item was 
just in the design guidelines, it talks about having 80% of the floor area on the of the first floor on the second floor. And I don't know if that was discussed in, in the meetings with the um, staff, but uh, it might be something that's achieved with having to eliminate some of that square footage. So I don't know if that was <clears throat> something in the forefront, but um, okay, it might be more in line with uh, that particular part of the guidelines if, if you're having to reduce the second story. Right. Um, and I think that was all I had to add. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Angela. Thanks, Angela. Tyler, last but not least. <laughs> Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, thanks, Sean, for the presentation. Um, don't have much to add, uh, just that um, overall, I think it's a, it's a really good infill project and I appreciate the efforts to uh, sort of blend it in with the architecture and style of the neighborhood. Um, I would emphasize I think staff's comment, which has been uh, talked about here around, uh, I'm just trying to find it here, uh, just about uh, sort of the landscaping and, and uh, finding some additional opportunities there um, and sort of echo the, the concern about trying to sort of delineate more private space. Um, I wasn't able to sort of pick up uh, some of that through the presentation or, or for the materials. So I think some effort there. Um, could go a long way. Um, and there was just one staff comment that actually sort of st stood out to me and it was to consider the window symmetry. And it's not usually one that's sort of included, but it, there was a, um, when I read that comment, it actually sort of appealed to my impressions of uh, some of the windows as well. So uh, I don't know if that's just the renderings and how they come through on the plans or what, but um, I, I just, it sort of stood out to me when I was looking at it and then I saw that comment. So um, I think it might be worth taking another look at it. Other than that, uh, thanks so much. Great, thanks Tyler. Thanks Tyler. And uh, I don't really have anything to add. I just uh, would like to thank you and your person developing this for a very thoughtful project. I think you've it, made a lot of effort to uh, build something that's going to be fitting and in, fits in, well into the neighborhood. And I agree with you in building in terms of that back space there. I was in that alley today and somebody was wandering down there. <laughs> and I thought, well, yeah. And then there's just a row of fences. So I think if you, if we start, if you start opening up that back lane and have like Angela says, eyes on the street, um, that might help mitigate some of the problems that you're having in that area. And uh, I think it's just, it's a good inf infill project overall, just a few little things to consider. And I basically um, agree with, but it's been said here. So um, thank you very much for that. Thank you all for your time tonight. Much appreciated. So we need to just sort of uh, round this up here before we go. We'll do a, we'll do a vote on it. Um, I'm hearing a few um, recommendations for this. Um, first of all, add more green elements to the landscape Consider and consider shrubs or hedges on the retaining walls. Is, is there any, does that sort of fit with people? Or somebody want to suggest a, a better phrasing for that? Okay. Um, also consider um, uh, green options such as solar lighting. Angela, like that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, try to find ways to expand outdoor amenity space and private amenity space. Okay. And uh, also consider, I don't know, Tyler, if you wanted to have in, consider the window symmetry or just leave it at that. <laughs> no? Okay. I'm fine just leaving it. Uh, if nobody else nobody else commented on it, but it, it just was pointing out something that did stand out to me. If I could just speak for just a second on that one point there, and I'll just say that this was an important factor to us as well. Um, but we have we have setback issues with respect to the amount of glazing area adjacent to other properties. So that was what drove the window sizes. Um, and unfortunately, we would love to have larger windows uh, all around that building um, and uh, particularly on the lane side, which is where we might see some increase in size. But if you look at the floor plans, what we, you'll find is, is that some of the smaller windows, well, they're, they're small because they're either in a bathroom or they're in a, they're a, they're a transom window over a, a, a kitchen cabinet or, or something of, of that like ilk. Um, so I, I, I appreciate the comment and, um, and it is something that we tried to try to be scratched your head a lot on this. 
Um, but at the end of the day, um, this is what we ended up with. We could certainly revisit this and see if there's an opportunity to put more glazing in by by looking at those uh, those calculations again. But I suspect that um, the amount of glazing is as is, is, is much as we can put in. Um, and I guess a reorientation of that is possible if necessary. Okay. All right. So I'm just I'm just trying to um, narrow down the uh, recommendations then. So again, add more green elements to the lands landscape, such as considering shrubs or hedges on the retaining wall. Consider green options such as solar lighting. Try to find a way to expand the outdoor amenity space and private amenity space. Um, I don't know if you, do we want to consider reorienting the building as Angela suggested. I don't know if there's any panel members, does the panel members support that as a recommendation or Angela, did you want to make that as a recommendation? Um, I would make it as a recommendation if, if there was other panel members uh, supporting that. Otherwise I would just make it as a comment to consider. Okay. So do other panel members want to consider uh, that is a recommendation to consider reorienting reorienting the building. I was okay. going to suggest that uh, the orientation that uh, has been proposed, the view is down the hill of Albert Street, which is really the view corridor. And looking the other way, I don't think you have as good a view. The view really, you know, if you really look at it, and I've drove around that place several times, and it really is down because Albert Street is a hill coming up there. And, you know, it really opens up that, uh, the view corridor down that road. So I agree with the way that uh, they have oriented the building is the way it should be. Okay. If you're yes. talk, just talking about view. Yeah. I appreciate Angela's comment and, uh, uh, and it's true, you, you know, you, you can, start developing a project like this and, and there's so many different ways you can do it and uh, the, the designer uh, and the developer has spent hours looking at the site and uh, I, I agree with Kane that uh, um, I think I, I'm not sure how you can recite this building uh, and still pull off what 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 is proposed how how the applicant has you know almost maximized the site coverage and floor area ratios and and got this to work and uh, so uh, sorry angela <laughs> <laughs> even though it, I, I i agree in some instances about it but it, it is a very di difficult site when you're dealing with dealing with laneways and stuff so mm -hmm. so uh, uh i'm i'm against that at that uh, recommend recommendation. Uh, Tony, did you have a comment on that? Well, just a small one. I've been looking at the the site plan again, and I'm not sure rotating it would actually work, like logistically, because I presume you're still going to have that right away running along the you know the side of the building there. Which, if you rotate the building, makes your site considerably narrower. You might not be able to get the four parking stalls within that width. Um, I, I think it would you know, totally make all the suites a lot narrower than they cur currently are. So I'm not sure it would be an improvement. I do take, I do take your, your point to Angela, and I think it's definitely merit, but presumably the applicant has looked at a lot of variations. But I think at this stage of the game, um, I think it would be more trouble than it's worth to, to, to try and sort of shoehorn it into a, what would be a much narrower site. But... Uh, so I'd, I'd be inclined to support it the way it is. Okay, sounds like you're not getting too much support there, Angela. <laughs> Thanks for the suggestion there. Okay, so um, I'm coming up with four four recommendations, and so I'm not hearing I'm hearing support for the variances. And Kate, did you have something to add there? Um, I think I'd like to recommend that they do do something with the SRW. Um, it's, a, it's a considerable amount of space, even if they just contemplate it as a pollinator garden, it's a very low cost um, mm. way of Good thinking. increasing the biodiversity and mm. beauty on your site. And and, and, and and it's very popular right now. And how well, would you colleagues are taking that on. So that might be a nice option. How would you, how would you phrase that? Consider ways. So to, I just think maybe to recommend 
I guess, take, I guess taking advantage of is not the right words for us, but to utilize the SRW space to um, increase the biodiversity on the site or the plant, you know, plant material or to accommodate other species as in a pollinator garden or... Well, maybe we'll increase with other with increase the plant materials and leave it up to them. I don't think we. Yeah. Oh, so maybe just to utilize the SRW to increase the the plant material on site. Plant material on site. Or vegetation, or however you want to phrase it. You're the you're the landscaper. I know. <laughs> I don't always have the right words. Well, there's lots you could do to green the space up uh, by mm. by doing that. It also would be a nice softening of the of the transition from the from the laneway to the building. Mm -hmm. um, but that'll be uh, up to a gram, unfortunately. We don't get to make that. Clear. Yeah, I, I don't think they'll have an issue with it because the city does have like boulevard planting um, initiatives and they have had recently, I think you referenced the laneway improvements in the Old City Quarter. So mm -hmm. it, it's like when they go to widen the lane, it's just dig it up, it's easy. Mm -hmm. It'll be no problem. Well, pr pr prettier is, is better as far <laughs> as I'm concerned. So uh, we'll, we'll endeavor to do that. Okay, so then I'm coming up with five recommendations. So add more green elements to the landscape, uh, consider green options such as solar, uh, try to find ways to expand outdoor amenity space and private amenity space. Uh, consider, no, oh, sorry, we're taking the considerary orienting the building out. So there's only four. Consider ways to utilize the SRW space and to increase the plants, uh, plant vegetation on site. Okay. So um, maybe somebody can make a motion to accept this proposal as presented with those uh, four recommendations plus acceptance of the variance. Uh, Kevin had his hand up first and Ken seconds and all in favor. Okay, it's passed. Very well done, Sean. Thank you very much Thanks for the presentation and uh, luck with the project. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Have a nice evening, guys. Okay, and I don't think we have any other business tonight, so I think we can probably call for adjournment. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay.